Gentlemen. Talking Fight Club. We all go rad tonight. Talking Fight Club. Better than the stress of saying less about less. And of course, we should be able to win the offline info war, which is not just online, right? I'm sick of online, especially in the nice weather. I have way less interest in talking to a camera or looking at people talking to cameras than I do in meeting with other patriots, even at the protests or rallies. We were talking about how the energy of connecting with each other as people, people who are kind of red pilled, people who are patriots, people who are concerned about what's going on, people who are having real conversations with each other, people who live near each other and have shared interests in, you know, what's happening where they live. That energy is a lot it's a lot better. It's a lot more kinetic than the energy you get from talking to a camera or looking at people who talk to cameras or watching videos on the internet, right? The energy of connecting with your neighbors is incredibly important and that's why winning the offline info war is crucially important so i'll leave on that note in the sense that i recommend patriots do what we did back in the day we used meetup.com because you know you can use facebook or whatever but we, we used meetup.com basically a bunch of us were kind of red-pilled we we're watching different videos by different filmmakers the money masters or america freedom to fascism or alex jones classic work when he was a a young man and furiously filmmaker and now he's an older businessman and pundit pontificator as opposed to spending you know 18 hours a day obsessively editing videos with that young man energy right but we were watching a bunch of red-pilled stuff and this is before social media and we didn't have that many people to talk about it with so um somebody set up i don't even know who it was but somebody set up a group called toronto truth seekers right and they said hey we're going to meet you know every um uh, saturday around noon for a couple of hours at this shawarma place right where we could have shawarma sandwiches right so we met there you know 10 people then 15 20 people typically around 20 people 15 to 25 people basically right was kind of what the size of the group was right but we'd get together we'd order shawarma sandwiches or falafels we'd chill out and we were just talking to each other right patriots just talking to each other hey did you see this movie oh i did what'd you think of that oh it's pretty crazy i don't know how about this you know the meeting was over you know around you know 2 3 p.m or 2 o'clock you know a couple of hours later 2 3 p.m or whatever and i said oh i'll see you next week yeah yeah i'll see you next week and we had a great time connecting with people like that of like mind offline right so all it was all it started off was was just pay, local patriots getting together just like other meetup groups where it's the chess meetup, the knitting club meetup, the book club meetup, the parachuting meetup, right? Meetup.com had a bunch of those local meetup groups, right? And um, so lots of people use meetup.com to meet about their interests. Ours just happened to be Toronto truth seekers, truthers, seeking the truth, patriots, you know, whatever. If, if some of those words have a negative connotation, whatever. So we were just meeting, you know, every Saturday. And we were just meeting and hanging out and talking and getting along and becoming friends, right? And as we became friends, some of us would hang out, you know, the people that got along better at these sort of things would become closer friends, you know, exchange phone numbers, exchange emails, you know, maybe hang out outside of that, right? And then we, that was the, the sort of red pill ville. And then we went back to our blue pill lives, right? Blue pill job, blue pill friends, blue pill parties, blue pill bars, blue pill you know, restaurants, blue pill, whatever, right? So we had both. We had the red pill, you know, red pillville, and then we had blue pillville, right? And you, you, you know, you, the twain didn't mix, right? You can maybe casually talk about it with people, but you wouldn't go into it with people that much if, if they weren't comfortable with it, right? But we had a group of friends who we could speak freely with. We didn't have to be like, hey, I saw this crazy documentary about how rich evil people print money from nothing to control the world. And your friend's like, uh, yeah, that's kind of weird. And you're like, never mind, never mind, you know? Let's talk about the Raptors or Blue Jays or Leafs or something, right? It's like, it's like you know, you had people you could speak freely with offline, which is great. Then we became friends. And the more we talked about, oh, this is so crazy. Man, they want to microchip us. They want to nanochip us. They want to vaccinate us. They want to track, search, drug, and chip us. And they want to control us. And they want to kill us. And they want to, oh, it's good. 
the more we hung out and talked about it, it was cathartic and it was good to kind of speak freely on these things and in real time back and forth, not just typing online, not just leaving comments online, you know, like these days, you know, uh, the sort of, um, you know, Twitter or Gab <clears throat> or social media, Goldfish eating, pooping, and forgetting bits of crap, repost, retweet, repost, retweet, repost, re little, blah, 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 you know, and then just disappears <clears throat> with a long string of stuff. You no, know, it was really looking at, talking to, listening to each other, right? So that was great. But then we felt like acting, right? So then some of us are like, we got to do something about this. We can't just sit here and talk about how these people are crazy and they want to do crazy things to us and everyone where we live. We have to do something, right? So we set up um, a, a meet and greet table at Dundas Square in downtown Toronto, Canada. And <clears throat> we had our table there. It started off very small. It grew into a larger table, bigger this with a big umbrella with some signage on it or whatever. And we printed up with our own money. And we took some donations later on after a while, right? But we printed up our own flyers and, and, and so on. And, and we had our own posters and flyers and DVDs. And we would be there, a group of, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25, depending on the size of the group, polite patriots, just chilling on a nice day, a beautiful summer day, like the summer days we see in Toronto and other parts of the West today, right? Just be chilling, just right in the middle of town, right outside the Eaton Center, a giant mall, right at Young and Dundas, the very center of Toronto, basically downtown Toronto anyway, not the sort of geographical center of the whole city, but if you're going to go downtown, Young and Dundas is arguably the center, the heart of downtown Toronto. And there were <clears throat> thousands of people milling about, and we were just casually talking to each other or casually handing out, you know, flyers, you know, thank you. People would smile, like, oh, okay, sure, take it. So we're like, yeah, no thanks. Yeah. Next person, <clears throat> there you go, and we just do it. And it was all casual. We weren't frantic or furious. We weren't arguing, yelling, screaming, you need to hear this or, or you're going to die. What's wrong with you? We weren't doing nothing like that. <clears throat> we were just chilling, getting along with each other, ignoring people who ignored us, politely saying hi to people who said hi to us because they were just curious about us. Yeah, a bunch of people over there doing something. Yeah, how you doing? What if they're weird or not? No, just cool. Saying hi, saying hi. Some people would just take something to go. They'll come over and talk to us. Yeah, you know, I'm, I've got my concerns about the vaccines too. And it's like, well, yeah, here you go. This is where you can get exemption forms, vran.org. Well, I don't know. I think some are pretty good. Some might have cured polio. Well, do you want to talk about it? We can talk about whether that was real shit or bullshit, whether it was the vaccine or whether it was just, uh, you know, better food and hygiene, right? And and other, you know, and we just have conversations with people and <clears throat> they'd come over and then people would see other people coming over and being nice and looking at and talking to us or being nice and looking at and talking to them and they would feel like coming over and so <clears throat> we had people constantly coming over hanging out mixing with us and the only people that looked crazy were the people that would you know that hated us or saw something that triggered them and they you people are crazy i don't know how could you do this what are you doing here <laughs> those people looked crazy to us to everybody else watching right? The people that couldn't handle it, the people that freaked out, right? There's just a, very rare, but just a couple of people freaked out over seeing some our signage on the little table that we had or something that, you know, said whatever, right? A couple of people freaked out, but they looked crazy. We, the polite patriots, did not look or act crazy. The regular people out there, the audience, the third party, they didn't look or act crazy. The crazy person freaking out over what we were standing for or saying or doing or the information we were sharing the person freaking out about that they looked crazy right so that's important that's why polite patriotism is so important right and um <clears throat> so we were there like every saturday for the summer and we were there from noon to like 3 4 p.m and then we packed up all our stuff we gave out thousands and thousands of flyers and dvds and so on we um we gave out thousands of legal vaccine exemption forms to parents who came up to us coming from all over the toronto area an hour two hours away right maybe not just to see us but definitely to see us like they that was a major part of their trip was making sure they saw us we printed out these eight and a half by 11 forms because the swine flu vaccine was going to kill everybody back then and they were like oh can i have two vaccine exemption forms please are you the people with the exemption forms can i have two please thanks and thousands and thousands and oh sure here you go and we gave them a little flyer with the website where they could download and print their own right um and, uh, and so we did that, right? And then after, from 12 to 3, 4 p.m., we did that. And then we got tired. We got chilled. People had to go, whatever. We kind of wrapped things up. And then we went out to eat. We celebrated a great day. 
We're like, that was a great day. Hey, remember that guy? Remember this? Remember so and so? Blah blah blah. You know, we 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 went out. We went out for a meal after that, right? That was that was a great Saturday. That was a Saturday. We had, we had so much fun. Like it was it was you know, arguably the best part of our week in terms of being free to express ourselves with other people, free to express themselves, confident, polite, proud, patriotic Canadians. You know, um, you know, getting together, doing something worth doing you know, for ourselves and everyone else where we live, right? It's worth doing this, right? So that was a huge part of, of, of our social life, right? And then, you know, afterwards, you know, 12 to 3, 4 p.m., then 4 to 6, 7 p.m., you know, whatever, doing all this stuff. And then, all right, I'll see my red pill buddies later. Then I just go to a regular house party with my other buddies, right? And then, you know, a couple of times they say, oh, were you out in the streets today? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're doing that stuff. Cool, man, how'd it go? Well, it went great, man, you know, whatever, you know? So talked about it a little bit with some people who wanted to, didn't talk about other people who didn't. Sometimes I had a little flyer, buddy of mine's having a kid. Say, look, man, let's not talk about this at a party. Just take this little piece of paper, put it in his breast pocket. This is just some stuff in vaccines. We don't want to get into it too much here at this house party, but just take a look at it later. Stupid, laugh, throw it out, don't worry. These are cheap, these are like two cents each. But if it's smart, enjoy it. Use it. You want to talk to me, fine. You don't, no problem. Just make an informed decision. Cool? Yeah, sure, buddy. Put it, just took it like that, put it in his breast pocket. <clears throat> Done. Now, what's up? Let's talk about The Simpsons. Let's talk about sports. Let's talk about girls. Let's talk about guys. Let's talk about money. It's whatever, right? So that was what we did, right? And um, <clears throat> plus, a bunch of us guys especially, a smaller group, you know, 15 <clears throat> to 25 with the street action, and then <clears throat> sometimes, you know, three, four, five, ten <clears throat> guys loaded up our backpacks with a bunch of posters and flyers, <clears throat> and we went around the city slapping posters up, flyering cars, flyering buildings, typically in teams of two. It's okay, you go that way up the street, we'll go this way up the street, and we'll meet you back here in half an hour. Cool, cool, right? Boom, boom. And we would just we would just go military style, military style, right? Just <clears throat> hitting up all the businesses, hitting up all the mailboxes, hitting up all the car windshield wipers, you know, just leaving them there. Um, you know, uh, apartment buildings, you know, just start at the top, make your way. Okay, you know, okay, can we get in that apartment building? Yeah, you can get in that apartment building. As soon as they open the door, no security, whatever, no problem. We're not being jerks. If anybody catches us, what are you doing? Well, we're sharing information to help people be informed and empowered right and we think it's helpful and it's better than junk mail polite patriots can beat junk mail you usually get junk mail you get a wendy's coupon you get you know, some grocery store flyers some real estate agent trying to you know get you to use him to sell you sell or buy a house we can beat that the stuff we're stuff our stuff beats that right <clears throat> we're not against that <clears throat> you can get all that stuff it's fine but our stuff is just as good if not better than that right so <clears throat> you know so we do that all right uh, you know Let's hit an apartment building. I'll take odds. You take evens, right? And I did all the odd floors. Went down every you know, this floor, stairwell, that floor, stairwell. Other guy, even floor, stairwell, even floor. Met at the bottom. Cool. Finished. Done. Out of flyers, you know, out of posters or whatever. Call it a night, right? Because we were really worried at the time about what was going to go on, right? So we were really kind of military style against the swine flu, like just the, the, the hardcore, especially guys. Nothing against girls. I love girls. I love girls. Great. As a man, I can I can say to any man who's ever lived or ever will, you got to fight. You got to fight. You got to fight and defend your country. You can say to any man who's ever lived or any man who ever will, just to feel like a man myself, just like any man can, right? When it comes to girls, <clears throat> more than welcome to, supportive, help them, whatever, but I can't treat them the same. And I've seen the problems that happen when it comes to people being able to have self-respect and respect each other when we all think we're the same. We're all kind of sideways, not sure what to do, compliant corporate clones or commie zombies, you know, it's it's a lot worse, right? So, um, <clears throat> so, so there were girls at the table, there were girls at the meeting, right? <clears throat> but when it comes to the, <clears throat> excuse me, the military style, <clears throat> 50 pound backpack full of heavy paper, posters, flyers or whatever, going out, slapping them up, going through parking lots, <clears throat> getting chased by security, getting stopped by the cops, right? Like, you know, questioning us about this, that, and the other. That was where we manned up. And we, we, we handled that, right? <clears throat> and we felt great. We felt great. Didn't suck, right? And then, you know, the group, you know, kind of dissolved later on over some BS or whatever, um, you know, as, as these things happen, right? Um, but, um, you know, I do bring that point up to say it was a great time. There's video of a lot of it, like I share. You know, you can see the description below. And it's something that we can do today. 
right? Um, it's something that we can bring back because that that beats swine flu. We were even covered on CBC News. They sent over a camera crew, as, a, as I think I mentioned earlier, you know, to cover us in, in, in this vlog. Um, and, um, and, <clears throat> and, and people liked it, you know, because we were cool. They weren't sheep. We weren't crazy. We were just polite Canadians with, you know, trying to do the right thing. And they were polite Canadians who were either curious about it or not. If not, we didn't bother them. We didn't bother each other. We didn't bother anyone. And nobody bothered us. And the few people that did act crazy looked crazy to everybody, right? But the rest of us were cool. And the same thing can happen today when it comes to beating this new flu, right? We did this to beat swine flu. And the same thing can be done locally, everywhere you're allowed to still go outside and freely express yourself today. Not just at protests, but to reach out to your neighbors and connect with them and give them a chance to hear different and think for themselves. Give them a chance to learn more <clears throat> and give them a chance to defend their country, right? There's a lot of people out there that wouldn't mind a chance to defend their country if they knew that their country was under attack and if they knew that there was something they could do to fight back, which includes not just staying at home, waiting for your guns and waiting for the drones to show up and waiting to shoot, you know, the first five or 10 before you run out of bullets and the next 15 or 20, you know, just destroy your house, right? <clears throat> you're not just waiting for the armed revolution, right? If you can locally organize with your neighbors to win the offline info war in the way that I just mentioned, then I believe that you could possibly organize with your neighbors to win an armed war, right? If you're in America where there's lots of guns or in Canada where there are some people with guns. But if you can't organize to, to, to take action and win the offline info war, I don't have a lot of faith that you'll be able to organize to take action to win a physical confrontation with guns, right? I wish everyone luck if it comes to that. I'll certainly try and fight myself. If I don't have guns, I'll try and go on the internet and figure out how to make a potato gun or get a 3D printer, try and make a 3D printer gun, a printed gun, right? Whatever. But my point is that if you can organize, locally organize with your neighbors to win the offline info war and establish that polite patriots are doing a good job for, 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 for people where they live. And you can get everybody kind of informed and empowered, especially in the summer of 2020, when we only have so much time before mandatory, uh, you know, uh, uh, tracking and searching and drugging and chipping and vaccines and, 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 and lockdowns and quarantines. And if you've ever come within 50 feet of somebody with a coronavirus antibody, like anybody who's ever had a flu, then they have to track everything you ever do, you know, because you might also have the flu or have, you know, the this insanity, right? Instead, you know, we can beat that today if we feel like it and if we take action, right? And, 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 and this has already worked before after a fashion and it can work again with many more people. You can just get off the internet instead of sharing memes with each other, just sharing snarky comments, not trying to insult you, but I see what's going on out there relative to what could. And so it's, people have to say this stuff. People like me who can have to say this stuff, have to say, look, if you're serious enough about this to write that, type that, make that meme, share with other people who already think the same way, um, then you, you could be serious enough to do the other things that I say. Or, or build on them or improve on them. Don't do it. Don't do it because I said it. Do it because you think it's a good idea and then do your own version of this or think of something better or improve on it. It's all good. We're all sharing patriot best practices worldwide so we can locally take action and save where we live. And to me, winning the offline info war in the ways I suggested is a patriot best practice. It is something that's been proven to work, been proven uh, that civilians were cool with it, patriots were cool with it, media's cool with it, the police were cool with it, everyone was cool with it, right? And the same thing, while we're still allowed out, while the weather's nice enough to go out, while there are many other people out, you know, then people uh, worldwide, you know, can do this. If you look at what the people in Hong Kong are doing against the evil communist Chinese government, the murderous regime with live organ harvesting, with trapping millions of Muslim Uyghurs, with going out in the streets, with dealing with the cops. Now, you know, 
more and more aligned with the giant communist evil Chinese government and military next door to Hong Kong with the Chinese mafia groups and triad groups that are there that are also beating up on the protest. If you see all these brave Hong Kong protesters, students, people of all ages fighting against this, using bricks, you know, uh, you know, making barricades, all this shit. If they can do that and other people around the world have defended their countries, you know, doing a lot less than, or a lot more than this, then we can all do this, right? So that's why I leave you with the offline info war as, 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 you know, the final, the final solution, not to use the Hitler term, but as, as, a, as, a, as a great uh, option, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to consider, right? If they can do that, the people in Hong Kong can do that. And if people, if our ancestors have done a lot more than this to defend their countries, then we worldwide, wherever we legally can, can do this and this will help and this will work and i'm not saying it's going to take care of all our problems but what it will do is it will inform and empower everybody where you live and that will help take care of all our problems and that can't be a bad thing so um <clears throat> so there you have it um you know we'll leave it there for now um bk for manforwars.com man for wars media feel free to like comment subscribe share get in touch with questions answers uh to work together or financial support See the description uh, below for more. And uh, otherwise, um, I hope this helps. I hope this gives you something great to do. And, uh, and I hope this analysis of YouTube is something that helps too. And I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Gentlemen. Talking Fight Club. Talking Fight Club. Talking Fight Club. Better than the stress of saying less about less. You can see the machine that does it. It uses computers and it does the, paints the lines automatically as it goes along. These are in this park as a way to promote and encourage physical distancing. The rule is you can walk in. If you see a circle, you can step inside. If you don't see a circle, keep on walking. These type of social distancing circles are already in use in cities like San Francisco and New York. If they're effective here, you could see them in other parks across the city. At Trinity Bellwoods Park, I'm Carl Hansky, 680 News. <laughs> no, 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 no. anywhere like you were there but fight club only exists in the hours between when fight club starts and when fight club ends even if i could tell someone they had a good fight i wouldn't be talking to the same man who you were in fight club is not who you were in the rest of the world a guy came to fight club for the first time his ass was a wad of cookie dough after a few weeks he was carved out of wood marla look at me i'm really okay trust me Everything's gonna be fine. You met me at a very strange time in my life. <laughs>